Hello, everyone. Uh, it looks like we have a big group today. We have about uh, 29 to 30 people. Wow. And, yes. And my <laughs> name is Ana Figueroa. I know a few of you. I may be meeting some of you for the first time. So in case we haven't met yet, it's a pleasure to meet all of you today. Again, my name is Ana Figueroa, and I am one of two interim learning uh, coordinators at West LA College. And so um, as you're all joining, um, I would like to welcome you not only to this webinar, but also uh, to the semester that is upon us. So it's a pleasure to work with you today. And I do hope that you can all hear me okay. Is How is the uh, volume? It's just right. Oh, perfect. Well, we're going to give folks uh, who may be in the other Zoom link uh, a few minutes. So uh, we can just take a couple of minutes just to check in with everyone. Uh, please also write your name um, in the chat box so we can give you folks credit for being here today. And is there um, any questions that you have? Do you have any questions for me? Or would you like to share how you all are doing? It's wonderful to see you all. So, so people are still adding. So we have quite a few people muted. Um, I should let you know that it's uh, we're gonna be joined today by Hadi Daba. Um, Hadi is one of the uh, participants and also part of the distance learning team. He's actually monitoring um, the chat so that if you have any questions and I happen to miss it, he will let me know that you have a question. And so um, while everyone is joining, I'm also going to share something with you. Um, I have a document, a description of what we're gonna be working on today. And so I will share that with you. So I shared with you a file, uh, the title is Accessibility in Canvas. So if at any moment you feel that I'm going too fast or too slow, I have everything written out for you so that uh, you can follow along. And please know that at any time, if you feel like there's a question that maybe you need uh, further help with, you are always welcome to email me. You can also email our distance learning office and we would be more than happy to help you. So I am going to put my email in the chat. Okay, so I think that we're going to get started. And um, again, I want to welcome all of you. And today we're going to be working on Canvas accessibility. Um, I know that there um, are issues with accessibility, not, accessibility, not only in Canvas. Um, sometimes we have to work with uh, documents like Word or PDFs, uh, PowerPoints. And so um, I think that um, we have several areas we, where we can definitely work on accessibility. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing specifically on accessibility in Canvas pages. So first of all, I'm going to open the document that I just shared with you. And um, the first question that I have for you is uh, why accessibility and why is it important? And so I'm just wondering if uh, you can share with me maybe why you're here. Um, if you can unmute um, your mic, someone can share with us why they're here or why they think accessibility is important. 
So do we have a participant? And um, Hadi is in the chat so he can tell us. I think Ryan, you unmuted your mic. Uh, uh, yes, my name is Ryan Edwards, um, and I've been working on the poker group, the peer online course review uh, group, um, uh, reviewing courses. Um, and one of the things I've been working on is accessibility, uh, reviewing accessibility of courses. And that's been one of the kind of the major problems um, that we've encountered in a lot of courses is accessibility. Um, it's one of the more problematic areas. So I'm here to learn um, more about accessibility in Canvas. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And um, that's a great starting point. You know, we can always work on accessibility. It's um, the description tells us that planning for accessibility in your Canvas course is not only the right thing to do, it also meets federal and state legal requirements. An accessible online class not only ensures that students with unique needs can access the content in your class, but it also helps to improve online equity and student success for all students. And so in this webinar, we're gonna take a look at the big seven of accessibility. And these are things like headings, images, links, lists, tables, color, and caption. Um, I want you to know that uh, we do have a couple of built-in uh, tools that will help us. Uh, Canvas does have a, a built-in accessibility checker and it's on the bottom right of your rich content editor. And I'm gonna show you that in a moment. And um, it looks like a circle with a little man in there, in, in the circle. And if you click on that, it revises your page. It tells you um, what kinds of things may be going on in the page and how to uh, apply some corrections to make it more accessible. Um, and in addition, West has added something called Pope Tech to the bottom of your rich content editor. And this will allow you also to review your page. So behind, or I'm sorry, below uh, the rich content editor at the bottom, you see the accessibility checker. And below that, you'll see a circle with a P in it. That's Pope Tech. And Hadi is actually going to be giving uh, a webinar tomorrow at 2.30. And he's going to be explaining a little bit more about Pope Tech. So, and We're going to get started. I'm sorry, is there a question? Uh, yeah, Anna, I was just going to add something else, if I may. Um, of course, please. Uh, <laughs> so accessibility is great, not just for um, um, students who have some, you know, differing abilities, but it's also great for those with uh, language, English as a second language, and even me, um, and I am an English as a second language speaker, but... Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's my dominant language now. But even when I'm watching movies, I like to read the subtitles as, as it's going along. So there were about 30 of us, and we all got kicked out. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, no? this is um, while we have everyone joining. I think Grace was in the middle of describing. Grace, can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes, for some reason we all got kicked out of the meeting. It was not on purpose. So please begin again because the point you were making is so important. So would you please share with us? Um, yeah, so for students who speak English as a second language, and even if they don't, um, I find the accessibility really helpful because if they have language challenges, um, it allows them to read something and not just depend on um, sound. So it's, it's in addition to differing abilities, uh, I think the language skills, it really is helpful. And I'm really glad that you shared that with us because um, I, like, like you, I'm an immigrant. English is my second language and I do the same thing when I'm watching television. I have um, the captioning on and I can read, you know, subtitles. And so it really does help students. And we're going to see today that, you know, headings and lists and the fonts you choose, all of that is really important. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, I am going to add to the chat the uh, document that I posted for anyone um, adding a little bit later so that you all have it. Um, I did create let me find it. I did create a, 
Canvas class that I'm going to use. Ah, oh, there's so much here. In a moment, but uh, we're going to start because we do have a lot to cover. So, document. So again, if um, if um, at any time you have any questions, you can use the document. Okay, so let's move on quickly. Um, Hadi, can you please uh, send the document to everyone? It's not going through. Um, okay, give me one second. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. And I'm going to go right into our webinar. So I want to, again, welcome you to Accessibility in Canvas. And as we get started, you're going to see a page welcoming you with some of the information that I shared with you. And if we look at this Canvas page, it may look like it's okay, but one of the things that we're going to have to take a look at is uh, something like headers. So let's go ahead and edit this page. And as we take a look, we're gonna see that there's a couple of issues we need to check for. And so the first thing is, uh, if we move to the top here, um, but let's see, if you take a look, does anything look out of place to you? Does someone want to unmute their mic and, and kind of share with us what looks out of place? It could be in the design, it could be the font size, anything you think might be a little strange. You can type it in the chat box also. How do we, do we have any oh. comments in the chat box? Um, I will need the file again. We lost the uh, meeting for a few seconds and uh, I was in the middle of downloading my site. I don't have that file. Can you share it? Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and I'm going to send it to you. Let me send it to you very quickly. And sorry, we're having technical difficulties. We'll get through this. Okay, so honey, I just sent it to you. Um, I guess you send it to the, the friend email. Um, use the faculty email. I don't have that. Okay, did you get it? No? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, wait a second, it just arrived. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so we're in our Canvas page and let me share my screen again. And as we share, um, you're gonna see that here we have something called a header, right? So the header, uh, usually will uh, show you that this is the beginning of the information. Think of your headers as kind of like your topics and you can have subheaders um, underneath the main header. And so when you create a page in Canvas, automatically the title is going to be header one. So when I called this welcome to our webinar, this is automatically header one. Then uh, when you start typing information, the first thing that you write, the title of that uh, page at the top, and then your topic at the beginning, this should be in header two. And so as I look here, you notice that it says 28.8, but this is paragraph. It shouldn't be paragraph, it should be header. So there are two things we can do. Um, we could, click on the three dots, use the pencil and eraser to clear our formatting. And when we click on that, we can see that, didn't, didn't change anything. Oh, actually should have cleared our formatting. So now 
uh, we look at it, there's no change. What we have to do is apply heading two. And now this is correct. So I know it looks the same, but you do have to check heading two because if you don't check heading two, then a screen reader would not be able to show, um, or excuse me, to uh, read this as a header. And so a header basically provides key points of information to a screen reader so that uh, it uh, tells the person that's uh, reviewing the page uh, what information they can find. And so we look here and it says webinar objectives. Now here, this should not be a header to, this should actually be, I'm sorry, can someone, can someone mute? Call from, Three one zero three nine eight eight seven nine five. Please leave a message. I'll call you back as soon as I can. You want to push the mute out, Anna? Yes, I'm going to mute. Hold on one second. Okay, so when we get to the next header, we notice that that, that is um, heading two also. So you should use heading two as your main topics, right, within your Canvas page. So what I want to do is perhaps erase the space so that there's no space in between these headers. So here's header two. This is another header two because these are my objectives. And here's another one that should be header two because it's my description. Now let's say uh, below headers, you wanna put in additional information. What you can do then is create a subheading. So if I wanna choose accessibility in Canvas, I can choose that as heading three. And so you'll see that these look a little bit different now, uh, but now my headings are correct. Um, in addition, I want to mention that um, for your font size, the font size should be 12. Um, I know sometimes we want to uh, change the font size into a bigger size, but it's important in a canvas page that um, they look the same, that there's consistency. And so um, I would recommend that um, on your canvas page, you use the 12 point font size um, and not change the font size of your headers. Use the font size that comes with your headers because then um, you have consistency throughout your classes. Elizabeth, you have a question? Yes, that's good points you brought up. Um, as far as accessibility goes, I personally require some accessibility and I'm not using a screen reader. Mm -hmm. So I had damage to my eyes a while ago and as far as spacing, I actually prefer to space it out a little bit more and increase the font size for those who are looking at it visually mm -hmm. because it helps me to see it and otherwise the letters are all bunched together and they start jumping around on me. So right. Right. what about and visual um, accessibility issues like mine? Right, so the, um, the recommendations we got are from the CBC OEI. We took... Um, a few sessions of accessibility training. And one of the recommendations is um, not necessarily to increase it because um, someone using the computer may already have a special screen that has increased the, the wording, the lettering. And so if you make it bigger then when um, their screen is expanded, it, it might um, not fit correctly or it might um, create more issues. But I think that, you know, you use your best judgment if you're making it a little bit bigger. Just, I think consistency is important as long as it's accessible and consistent, I think you would be okay. And so, um, uh, but, but the main idea is that we're using here header and appropriate font size. I think what uh, would not be appropriate would be um, maybe font size that you're using that is like 10 or eight because it's too small. 
So Elizabeth, thank you for sharing that because that's exactly why we're having this um, webinar today. Uh, because we all have um, some unique needs, right? Sometimes um, I have trouble uh, listening and watching a movie at the same time, so I need captioning. Um, you can tell I'm wearing my glasses because as I'm getting older, I'm noticing that my eyesight is not as good as it used to be. And so really, um, I think accessibility is for all of us. And so um, Elizabeth, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so we're, we've gone over headers. So again, you choose your header just by uh, selecting uh, the text that you'd like to put a heading in and then just choose your header. Header two are you gonna be your he header twos are your topics and the subheadings are going to be um, headings three and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and save because we're gonna go on to the next. We actually have quite a few things we're going to cover today. And so as I, might, as I move forward, please feel free to ask any questions. I don't uh, want to leave anyone out. I want us all to participate and I don't want this to be boring. So please share with me your questions, concerns, ideas, um, sharing's the best. So I'm Anna, okay. I could have one more question. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, of course, Elizabeth. On the please. headings. So you said heading one and then subheading, you know, heading two and heading three, but what if you have a major heading and two subheadings under them, and then you have a second major heading, would that go back to heading two? Um, so heading one will always be the default title of your Canvas page. Your topics will be heading two. And then if you're creating um, information within a topic, you're, you can use headings three and four. You can continue doing subheadings for added content. And you're gonna see it in a bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that as we go along. Did I answer your question? I think so, I'll wait to see, because I have um, major headings and subheading headings under all of the major headings. So I'm wondering if we just keep continuing one, two, three, four, or if we have two, three, four, and then we have another two and another three and a four. Yeah, yeah and um, I will try to answer that question as we move along. And also I'll, I'll demonstrate it using the Word document that I shared with you earlier. So okay, thank um, you. very good question. So um, as we look at the next page, um, my page is how to create headings, right? That's what we've been working on. And so I wanted to expand a little bit on there. So take a look at that. And does anything look kind of out of place to you just by seeing this? and anyone's free to share or please type it in the chat box. And if you wanna type it in the chat box, um, Hadi will let me know what it says. So, colors. yes, I think someone. Colors, it doesn't make sense that you have red and then blue. Right, colors, mm -hmm. thank you for that. And actually sometimes, you know, we may want to use color to distinguish one thing from another. Uh, when we're writing, sometimes we want to bold and we want to add something kind of to let our students know that this is special or please pay attention to this part. Uh, but what I would say is um, when we're working on headings, um, the easier thing to do is just to use the correct headings and also try to avoid colors that um, are not accessible. And so if I press edit on my page, you're going to see that our uh, accessibility checker down here, the circle with the little man, is going to tell us that there's an issue. There's an accessibility issue and the issue is the color red. So what I found here is that when you use red, you really do have to make this uh, much bigger. If I change it to 18, then it should um, get rid of the problem. However, um, it, this is not a header. And so um, if you look here, I, I know that it's not a header because up here it says paragraph, right? And if I look at headings here, I don't have a header here. So if a student was using a screen reader, the screen reader would not be able to display that this is the topic and that uh, this is the subtopic. And so what I would wanna do is change those. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that by clicking here where it says paragraph, I can click on that 
um, and say heading two. Notice that it's bold. I really don't have to bold. It's already my heading. Um, one thing I notice here, you notice that it says 18. So mm -hmm. heading two is never 18. It's like 28 point something. So I can clear that by clicking on the three dots here. And if I click on the pencil with the eraser, it's gonna go ahead and clear my formatting. So now I see 28.8 and heading two. So this is correct. Now here, again, I don't have a heading. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that because I wanna start all over again. So I'm gonna click on my clear formatting button. It's gone back to normal. So now I can apply and I want this to be my heading three because I'm talking about headings and I wanna tell you how to use headings. So this is my topic. This is my subtopic. And I actually have another subtopic. I added some tips. So I wanna make this one my heading three also, it's just a continuation of my headings. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear my form formatting and I'm going to apply my heading three because I created uh, a title here, heading one, headings is my topic. And now I have heading three and heading three for how to use headings and tips. Um, some of the tips are this, um, please be careful with colors. Again, red is usually not accessible. Blue can be accessible, but never as headings. Um, if, if you're just using that, you need to use headers. Um, now, if you are typing, um, please make sure that if you want to set text apart, you should really have two ways of demonstrating to students that something is important. You can put it in parentheses, this is important because um, a screen reader will not read color, right? So just be aware of that. Another what, what tip- Highlight. Well, again, you would be thinking um, about your students. So if you have a blind student in your class, you can highlight, but the student will not be able to see that. So I would put in parentheses, this is important information or something that will convey that that is important so that the student understands that that is something they can uh, remember. Or they would it be remember. okay to use the parentheses, this is important information for the screen readers, but also bold for the visual learners? Exactly. And you should um, probably do two things. So if you're gonna bold, I would say bold and italicize or bold in something else, um, and then put it in parentheses. So absolutely. Um, one tip for all of you is avoid using all caps because a screen reader will read all caps as A-L-L-C-A-P-S. Mm -hmm. So please um, avoid all caps. I know sometimes we uh, tend to do that, uh, but it, for, for the purposes of a screen reader, it's better not to. And so um, you can clear formats. Again, the tip is three points here. Click on the clear formatting button. It looks like a, a T with an eraser. And you click on that and that will clear your formatting. And then you can apply format formatting here by choosing headings and just regular type is going to be a paragraph. So if I choose this and I just choose paragraph, it goes back to normal. There we go. Okay, so does anyone have any questions on that? Uh, I have a question. Since Very mo nice. most of the class is probably not needing this and maybe not, we, we might not even have a blind student. So. Right not using bold or, or um, highlight is really disservice for the majority of the students in service of maybe someone we don't even have in the class. So the question is, is there any rules about that, that if you don't have, like if, we're, if I get from DSPS a note that I have a student in my class, of course, no, by no mean I have to adjust it. But if I don't have uh, a student, then, 
it's disservice for the rest of the students who um, don't need it. I actually, Merit, I would um, say that when you make your page accessible, it actually is better for everyone. Because if you take a look at our page here that actually has correct headers, even if you don't have a student that needs a screen reader, um, take a look at the headings. It's very clear the information and the subheadings. Now, we um, I didn't say that you can't use highlight or that you can't use color, but um, just make use accessible color. So for example, red is not going to show up as accessible, but blue will. So you can use uh, blue or green and use the checker to let you know what color is um, accessible. So for example, if I chose uh, here Canvas Pages and I choose uh, to use uh, maybe blue, right? That will come up as accessible by the screen reader. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would still do that if I want to do that. I think that's perfectly fine. You can just write this. Right? You can use um, some language to convey that there is importance in that so that everyone will understand that it is. So again, the idea for accessibility is based on equity, right? Equity means that you're making accessible material for all students. Um, but I would um, also reach out to DSPS for more information on that. But uh, yes, our, our courses are supposed to be accessible. And we're going to kind of look at that a little bit more as we talk about videos. So um, I'm going on to the next uh, section, how to um, add alt text to images. And um, we like to use images in our lessons because, of course, you know, it breaks up the monotony of the language and sometimes we need images. For example, um, I teach language and sometimes um, an image can help me convey the meaning of a certain word in Spanish or um, kind of relate it to something or give cues to my students. And I think this can be um, important for many of our classes, right? I, I can imagine anatomy or um, biology, you need um, you know, certain images to convey a certain idea or process. And so I think images are important, but the idea is how do we make those images um, accessible? And you do that by adding alt text. And so we look at this page and um, on purpose, uh, this page is not accessible. Um, there are some errors and the idea is that you're going to help me figure out what's wrong. So there are quite a few things going on here. And so um, can someone unmute or please add to the chat box anything that you see that just doesn't seem okay. And we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Can someone type in the chat box and uh, Hadi, can you let me know? Um, excuse me, Anna, I have a question. Uh, I don't know if you want, but uh, you can use that pop tag and just push the bottom, see what, what's the recommend. Since you're talking about the same subject, I'm gonna review yes. it tomorrow as well, but it would be yeah. very helpful. So we don't yes. have to do everything manually. Exactly. Um, we're, we're going to be using pop tech in a moment. So yeah, we're gonna get to that in a moment. Um, actually, uh, you'll see it in, in uh, a bit. So, does anyone see, has anyone shared what looks odd on this page in the chat box? The word images is very small. Yes, thank you. The word images. So if we go ahead and edit the page, um, we can see that images seem small. There was a line through it. Mm -hmm. uh, notice that there's no header. Mm -hmm. We have an image here. We're gonna have to check for captioning. Um, I'm sorry, not captioning, alt text, excuse me. Um, and then we're gonna go over how to add images and insert the alt text, right? And there's some spacing in here. And lastly, uh, notice that there's a link here and the link is not embedded with meaningful words. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment too. So I'm gonna go ahead and look. And for images, obviously we're going to have to 
clear the formatting. And then we're going to be adding header two because of course, um, header one is our, our title and header one, uh, two is our, our topic. Okay, so we have an image here. And notice that when I click, if I left click on here, I see image options you go ahead and click on image options. And it says here, accessibility webinar picture. Well, that's just the title, but that's not alt text. So alternative text basically conveys the information for someone that can't see the picture. And so we want to include image options. And the idea is that usually you'll have about two sentences. And so for this image, um, I need a volunteer. You are free to unmute your mic or you can share in the chat box. What would you uh, use to describe this picture? And of course, this should be meaningful um, information for someone that can't uh, see the picture. So what could you say to describe it? Can I have a volunteer, please? This is an easy one. You get... Uh, Bonus points for answering this one. What's in the center? Here, we can say. Computer screen. Computer a computer screen, thank you. I don't know who that was, but thank you. A computer screen is in the center. There is an eye above. Uh, um, with hand pushing a button on the right. Oh, thank you very much, with uh, hand pushing. And then. Um, it goes into the brain through both, uh, all three of them, uh, the e hearing, seeing, and pushing the button. Okay, wow, and here? And I would say a computer screen um, with a globe in the center. Oh, wow. With a grid? <laughs> with a grid. A globe with a grid. Hmm. In the Ooh. center, okay. But so, I don't think that that's the point here. The point right. here so, is that uh, yeah. we actually, uh, when we use all our senses, we it yes. gets into our brain. So what's on the screen is not as important. Right, well, actually this brings us to a great question. And this is something that came up when I was going through training is that, um, Oh, I'm sorry, let me finish this. We put in information here and then you wanna click done. And now the image has alt text. But the idea here is that um, really the, the information we're going to um, use as alt text is important for your class. So if you're working on anatomy, right? It would be important to describe, well, there's an eye with eyelashes, there's a finger, an index finger pointing to a button, right? What is going to be important for the students in your class? Maybe if I'm teaching computing, um, I might wanna say a certain type of computer is in the center. So, you know, meaningful text is what the student will need for your class, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's your alt text. Now um, notice I have here a heading three, how to add images. And um, I think you all know how to add an image, but just, in case you don't, I'm gonna go quickly through this um, using Unsplash or adding images. You basically go into insert on top of your rich content editor. You choose image. You can upload an image from your computer or you can um, use Unsplash. Now I'm gonna go ahead and upload. If I upload an image from my computer, I can just click here in the middle and I can choose a picture from, oops, that's not what I meant. I meant, that's not, there we go. Pictures is what I meant. So here's some saved pictures. Um, oh, I like Bloom's taxonomy. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. But um, as I press submit to add it, you know, I notice that again, it does not have alt text. So I can click image options. And I can say a balloon with the words create, evaluate, 
and analyze in the center. So let's say that is a complete, I wrote everything. I can go ahead and press done. And now I have my alt text. Is um, it a balloon or a light? Um, I was looking at a balloon, but I think you can write a light. Yes, thank you. So balloon, light, oh, it's a light bulb. Yeah, yeah we we'll put bulb. in light bulb. There we go. But you don't want to say that it's Bloom taxonomy? You can, yes. I was going a little bit fast for the sake of time, but we can, sure, we can say, uh, let's see, a light bulb. Because then it taps into the image of a light bulb with, going off. With the words, with the blooms. Uh, what did someone just say? Blooms taxonomy. Taxonomy. Yeah, and someone just Light bulb goes on and off. And so this, those, those words represent insight. Okay, great. The words represent, look, you're all sharing. I love this. This is um, all of us uh, actually participating in this and I love it. Thank you. The words represent insight. Perfect. And now once you feel um, ready, you press done and now you've added your alt text. And so um, the information on how to add alt text is there um, in the document I gave you. And so um, you can make images um, accessible by adding that information. Let's check. There, we have a computer screen with a globe in the center. There's my accessibility checker. Alt attribute can only be 120 words. So we're gonna have to uh, take something out. Maybe we need to take out this, let's see. We have to be modest with our words, meaning we can't write that much with a hand. If you just put a comma and then say with an eye above and a hand on a button. Mm -hmm. right. right, so the checker will tell you that it's uh, it might be too much, but um, usually it's about two sentences. And so that's when you can check to see, but basically that's your uh, alternative text. Ah! your alt text. But All right, so. You push the, the check for each image or? You can just put it on top. Put on top of uh, your... One moment, please. I'm gonna have to mute oh, someone. One moment. Question. Uh, let's. Now. Um, Hadi, do you have access to have unmuting you. everyone? Yay. Well, no. Um, no, you don't. Have a, okay. You can make a ghost. Let me do that Any again. Any work over for yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, if I share with you one more time, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. So someone had a question. Can we go back to the question? The, the question was that uh, when you push on the accessibility, does it, that is check everything in that page or does it check how do you check specific item like the image only or how um, do you back after you save it how do you get back to the alt text right that's a great question there it actually the accessibility uh checker in canvas will check everything so it will check your um tables your headings your lists uh it, it checks for everything so all issues will will pop up here um, one thing it didn't catch is mm -hmm. this right here, which is this link right there. Um, this link should actually be embedded and we're gonna go over that right now. So I actually did this on purpose so I can show you how to do that. Um, but one thing you can use there is um, Pope Tech. So if you go down here, not the accessibility checker, mm -hmm. but Pope Tech button here below. Mm -hmm. Pope Tech will actually divide it into different things. Oh, okay. So you can actually um, find that useful. And again, Hadi is going to be doing um, the presentation tomorrow on Pope Tech. And so I think that's going to be really important because this is a new tool for all of us. I'm not sure if you're all aware, but um, we had Ally. And so we no yeah. longer have, have Ally. We um, it did have some glitches. It was very useful, um, but we do now have uh, Pope Tech. Temporarily, we're looking into another um, 
tool that we can use as well to help us with accessibility. But for example, you can check, right, images and links, or you can just check uh, text and contrast, right? So you can mm -hmm. look at the different issues and mm -hmm. it'll tell you um, what to do to um, remove, right? So you can do that or you can check for contrast here and it'll tell you when there's an issue with contrast. This has to do with the color we chose. Um, so um, Polk Tech in itself is going to be a presentation, uh, but I do recommend Hadi's presentation tomorrow uh, for help with that. And so let me go back um, into the next page. And so if you don't have any questions about alt text, I hope that was clear. But again, if you um, refer back to the Word document that I gave you, I will, um, you can follow the steps there. And notice that here we have a link issue and we're gonna go on with how to fix links. And so um, to insert links um, or embed links with meaningful words, um, this is something that on a Canvas page, maybe you want to use a link to provide additional resources. Um, one word of caution, um, when we provide links, not only do the links have to be accessible, but also the resources that we link out to should be um, accessible to students. And so um, if you do provide third party um, uh, resources, please make sure that they're accessible. Um, so for a Canvas page, um, if you have a link, you can select the link and once you select the link, you're going to be um, inserting the link um, using an external tool. And so um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's take a look at uh, Pope Tech. So here's Pope Tech. Pope Tech again is that button that's gonna help you with accessibility. And Pope Tech has um, a, a page that tells you how to fix five most common accessibility errors. Um, and so it has great information here about color contrast and it has information on images. And so I wanna make this avail available to all of you. And so I wanna take this link and share it with you. So I'm gonna select that link and I'm going to copy it. So I copied the link in this URL. Now I'm gonna go back to our Canvas page and let's say that I wish to share this with you. So I can type in, please refer to Hope Tech, how to fix the five most common errors or more information, there we go. So I, what I wanna do is I wanna place that link here, how to fix the most, the five most common errors. That's gonna be the title. So I can go ahead and select that, right? I can use my mouse, just select that. And if I go up to insert, click on insert, I wanna insert a link right? And remember, this is not a course link, but an external link, because I'm going outside my Canvas site to a URL. So I'm going to click on external link. And there's the text, the wording. And here I can paste my link. So I just tap on there. And I can paste the link that I just copied. Now, let's say you think about it, and you don't want to call it something so long. And I want to call it um, how to fix common errors. I can just change that. And now um, I have the title to my link here, and then I have the link and I am done. I can click done. And now I've embedded my link. So would it help if I can type this? Please refer to Pope Tech, how to fix common errors for more information. And so now um, when students were, would come to this page, um, instead of seeing a big URL, 
you'll just see this and it'll take you right to where you wanna go. Now, um, it hasn't come up yet, but um, can you maybe think about why you would want to give uh, meaningful words to a link instead of just using the link? Because I could have um, just used this, right? So I'm gonna save both of those. And let's see, why do we wanna use this, Hope Tech, how to fix common errors versus the actual URL? Does anyone have an idea? And if someone types it in the chat, Hadi, can you share with me? Yeah, but there's only one question. Okay. It's not, it's not about this. Okay, so um, I can actually make it a rhetorical, rhetorical question. And um, basically you want to um, create meaningful words um, to make it easy for a screen reader um, so that it's not reading HTTPS uh, backslash, backslash B-L-O-G dot P-O. You know, it's not reading the whole thing. So it's easier to say, please refer to, and then it'll say link, Pope tech, how to fix common errors. So you don't want to say the word link before you put in a link. And um, before an image, a description of an image, you don't wanna use the word image because a screen reader will read it as an image or as a link. So if you put here to the link, a screen reader will say, please refer to the link, link Pope Tech, how to fix common errors. So you want to just say, please refer to uh, whatever the meaningful words are. Um, you want to also avoid just saying here, please click here. Uh, but you want to give it wording that reflects what that site is going to uh, give them, the information that it'll give them, the title of the site or something related to that. And I hope that makes sense. Um, does that make sense? Or does anyone have a question specifically about links? And please feel free to unmute your mic if, if you have a question. Um, I think someone a Pope has a question. Tech question. Do we need a Pope Tech account or do we automatically, do oh. we automatically have access to it? Is that Lloyd? Yes, hi. Hi, Lloyd. Um, so no, you all have it now in, in Canvas. So okay. um, yeah, we put it in Canvas and um, I think uh, Cyrus did a great job at making sure that it's it's ready to go. We don't need a code or anything. Okay. No, no, it'll be right there for you to use. And and again, I can't wait for Hadi's um, session tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, also learning a lot about Pope Tech. So yes, it's there for all of us. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sure. Uh, and Anna, I wanted to mention that when you click on the edit, you actually have the icons now. So you don't have to go to insert image. You can just click on the icon. Oh, or, yes, or absolutely. Like our, you know, sometimes it's easier uh, mm -hmm. on the right there. Yes. So um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Like, um, for example, um, sometimes when you're um, putting in an app, yeah, people the, use the this, right? Sometimes if you're using Canvas Studio, you'll go here mm -hmm. or, yeah. So you have, see here the link Yeah, you have. So there it is just stating that, for example, if I want to embed a link, I can just click directly here mm -hmm. and you can put the text um, let's see. there. You can do that, definitely do that. Um, my go-to is always insert. I just press insert and go to wherever, whatever I wanna insert because I'm constantly embedding or putting in tables or things. So for me, personally easier to do this but for someone else, you know, for visual learners, especially, you probably have these memorized. Yeah. Here's your, um, you know, your image. Here's your link. Please feel free to do what, whatever is going to be easiest for you. Because, of course, you know, we have to invest our time and, and we're so busy. So thank you, Barrett, for sharing that. Because, yes, you can definitely um, use that. And so I'm going to go ahead and move on because... Um, I want to make sure I go through everything, how to create lists. So um, lists are great. Um, 
for information that you want to give students in an orderly fashion. Um, notice that you can uh, create lists in two ways. You can put in numbers or you can put in bullets. And I'm wondering if you, how you determine um, when to put in bullets or numbers. So why did I choose one, two, three versus So I know the answer because I went through uh, 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 six sessions of accessibility training, but I'm wondering when the order is important, like you don't want them to jump and do one before the other, you definitely want a number. Exactly. Thank like you. So Yes, like in a lab. Perfect. So in a lab, you have to have a follow order, right? You have to do first step, second step, third step. Um, and so because that's important, you want to use a number. Um, and normally they told us that numbering is um, done for um, when you have more than two items. So like three items, four items, and they have to be done in a specific order. But if I give you just a list of tips, then um, if it was just a list of tips, I can um, use bullets. So again, just to do that, I just select with my mouse. And then I just click on the button here. Um, if I uh, did not do that or did it wrong, let me see if this, I wanna check to see if the checker will do this. If I create this list without using the numbering, uh, the accessibility checker usually lets me know. So I went ahead and numbered one, two, three, instead of using the, the button here at the top. And so when I do that, normally the accessibility will tell me there's a problem. See, list should be formatted as lists. And so actually what it will do, it'll go through each number. I can click on format list and it's gonna go ahead and format the whole thing for me. Notice it's still one, two, three but now it did it according to um, the button here. So the format is correct. Um, so yeah, everything's good. So um, use bullets for you know, some tips you might give that aren't important in a certain um, list in a certain order, but when you have more than two items you, and they have to be in a certain order, especially for math, for, um, for sciences, I think it would be also very important. Um, does anyone have any questions? That's actually one of the easy ones. Okay, no questions. I'm gonna move a little bit uh, faster because tables are painful. And so um, the accessibility training that Diana and I had actually was pretty in depth. It also covered PDFs, uh, PowerPoint presentations and Word documents. And um, when you can, it actually is easier to convert your Word docs or um, uh, PowerPoint presentations into um, pages in Canvas than it would be to remediate a PDF. It's a little bit harder to remediate those. You can because Word and PDFs have um, accessibility checkers, um, but it, it, it's more um, tedious. It takes a, quite a few steps, but you can do it. Um, but um, if you um, include tables in your class, it really is important that your tables also have um, headers. So header column and row if uh, necessary. And so I'm gonna give you an example of tables. And uh, one um, caution is that um, you should avoid using um, tables for decorative purposes. And so um, when I started teaching, I wanted to have pictures, I wanted to have content, but I wanted it in a specific way and I didn't know how to embed a picture within the wording. And so I thought maybe if I use a table, I can spread it in the page. But actually that's not the way you do it um, because that's really more about designing how I want page to look. And so tables should really be uh, used for presenting data. And so to insert a table, um, 
I'm going to go ahead and press edit on this page. And um, I usually go to insert just because it's the easiest thing for me to do. Of course, there's a button here that says table. You can do that. Um, I find it easy just to go to my insert button and I can click table and I can choose the number of rows and the number of columns. And so here I just created a table and I'm gonna go ahead and write, um, let's see, maybe I just wanted three. Okay, so I'm gonna say, um, I'm talking about the size of cars in my Spanish class because I want students to learn how to say big, small, um, medium, grande, pequeño, mediano. So I'm going to go ahead and write um, size of car, color of car, and then I'm going to put in um, year. Maybe I want them to learn how to say the word year in, in Spanish. And so um, I'm thinking in Spanish and English, I was ready to say grande, let's say <laughs> big, um, color car blue, and the year I'm going to say 2020. So let's say I finished um, the whole table and I'm really happy with it. I love how it looks. I'm even going to go ahead and bold this because, oh, wow, I want that to stand out. And so um, this may seem okay. Let's say the, the table was complete. I might even say table one. Um, this is old school, but uh, when I did tables for my chemistry classes back in college, I would call it something table of um, cars and uh, year models. Um, so I even put a title, but even though we may think that this is actually complete, we're gonna find that it's not. It's um, the accessibility checker is going to tell us we have to add a caption. The table should include a caption describing the contents of the table, right? So we're going to have to add a caption. So even though I tried to put it in at the top, I actually should have put it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a caption and I'm going to apply. And notice that the table needs at least one header. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that I want a header row and column. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And so now um, the way this is marked, we have, um, this is actually your header for your um, table. This is your header row. And then this is actually your header column. So um, this would be able to be read by a screen reader this way. And then um, it would be, um, so left to right and then top to bottom. It would read here, top to bottom. And so, um, it, it is important that if you are using table for data, that you do have a header row, a header um, and a column, a header column, and include the correct information in that table, but not as a design tool, but for data. And I hope that makes sense. Um, does anyone have a question about that? Everyone's being really quiet. So either you don't use tables or- No, I use a lot. I just wanted, again, just, can you go again to the, um, how do you mark the top row and the, and the top and sure. the left co column? Okay, great. So Vered, um, you could just mark header row, um, but they did tell us um, it probably is better to create both header row and header column. So what you're gonna do is you want the screen reader to be able to read this top yeah. I'm sorry, the, the row here, mm -hmm. right? The top one. And then this one, top yeah. to down, right? So this is going to read size of car, big, medium, small. Um, and so uh, what I... How do you do it in one thing? Sure, 
Sure. So what you do is you go to the accessibility checker, you oh. click on it, and it tells you what the issue is. It says the table should have a caption. So go ahead and um, write in the caption, cat cars in your model, whatever your caption is, you're going to add that first. Mm -hmm. And when you click apply, oh, it should have said before, it's because I already said it. Oh. That's why it's not coming up again. Okay. Oh, let me see if I, if I um, erase, should maybe, let's see if it'll do it again. No, it might not. No, it's not going to do it because I already said it. But basically what's going to happen is when you choose the accessibility checker. I'm sorry, one moment, please. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mute everyone in one second. Okay, so um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, so um, again, when you click on the accessibility checker, it will, it will say, uh, put in the caption and then it'll tell you to put in um, a column and row header. So if I check here, See, it'll say add a caption here. Mm -hmm. And then it'll say next. Oh, the next. Okay. Yeah, okay. set okay. table header. So what you want to do here is you want to set both a row and a column. So it's reading left to right and top to bottom. Okay, I missed the next. Yeah, that's that's all you have to do is just um, you click here, header and row. Okay. And I think, in Verit, I'm so glad that, that you're here today because, um, you know, we at West, we, we represent so many different disciplines. And I think it's really important um, that we are addressing the issues that come up with different classes, right? When we're using our pages, sometimes we have symbols, we have um, tables, there's different types of present presentational modes. So it's important that we address all those issues. So thank you for that. Um, yes, here you would use header. Um, row and um, and header call. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, again, you can use Pope Tech and um, Pope Tech will actually help you with tables and lists. Mm -hmm. um, it shows you here that there's an issue. And if you click on it, it says layout table, review table to verify it's a layout table. Does it have a header row and column as appropriate? So it's letting you know that. And then um, ordered list, it's telling you verify that you have the correct order. So you can rescan. Pope Tech will do all of that for you. And so um, I think that those are two great tools that you can use. Um, I want to make sure that I answer um, all of your questions. And I, we do have question and answer. Um, and I don't want to run out of time. So let me quickly just review the idea of font color and type which I mentioned before. Um, if you look at this page, um, I hope now everybody knows, can see at least two things that are wrong with this page. Please, all of you, type it in the chat box and let me know what's wrong with this page. There are two things that are wrong. <laughs> and I hope you're typing in the chat box. Hope I'm not alone in this, but you should be able to see it. Right, everybody's typing, okay. Eight, nine, I love it, you're participating. So um, the, the thing that's wrong here is red. We're using red and also here, there's a color contrast issue. Notice how opaque this is and you can't really read it. And so this is going to be an issue. At the top, um, our heading is okay. We have a header two and a header three, but we do have an issue with this. So we could use the accessibility checker, we could use Pope Tech, but I hope when you leave today, you can answer the question without the help of those checkers. And it would be that this is red and it probably is better to use black, but if you use red, it's going to have to be 18 point. And this is really not appropriate um, color because there's the color contrast is not really conducive to being able to read the information. So um, the best way to fix that of course would be to choose a different color that's accessible. 
Um, and I can do that. Of course, if you want to highlight, you can just, you know, say this is important. But um, I do recommend a bold, bold blue or italic green um, can be used to identify um, the information. So if you want to use a different color, let's see if bold green works. This green may not work. Let's check. Ah, there's a color contrast issue. Let's see which it says 18 point would help or bold for 14 point, or let's try another bold color. I'm gonna choose up here, maybe that'll work. Let's see if I apply that, now it's fine. So I actually used a darker green. And so the way I did that was, if you missed it, I don't wanna to go too fast, but I had chosen a green that's too light. And so when I click the accessibility checker, it gives me this grid, this is where I am. And if it's just too light, I might wanna go darker. So you can see the green is getting darker this way. I went a little bit lower. I just chose a green that I thought would be okay. And it seems like that green is okay. And so um, I do see some something on the chat. Does someone have a question? Um, Hadi, is there a question? There are questions, but I guess you already answered. Um, there are people, um, somebody asked, why isn't it better to just avoid bolding anything? Um, well, I think that there are good uses of bold. I think this really is your choice. Um, you know, if you want to set something apart, like, you know, I could see for myself when I'm teaching Spanish, maybe there's a new concept that I want them to learn. And I want to you know, have that word in bold because I really want them to learn that concept. So I might want to put it in a color, like if it's a new verb or something I want them to understand. So that's one reason I would do it. But um, really it's up to you when you're creating the material. As long as it's accessible, it's okay. And you, there's there's ways to make this accessible, right? Just choose a color that would be accessible this and find also another two identifiers. Yes. This is how they do it in the textbook. There is a bold word you know in that we it's a new term that we're trying to teach so right. i think we, we kind of copy that because it is effective right and again what we can do is um you know use multiple identifiers not just colors so you want to say you know use bold green and italicize and put a little you know read this or study this you know something that will help um so before i run out of time because i do want to get to your questions um, we're not going to get to captioning a video today, but I do want you to know that we do have resources for captioning. Um, Deanna Gossett led um, a webinar on how to caption videos using um, Canvas Studio. So Canvas Studio is an icon. It's here in, on your Canvas page on the left navigation bar. And so Canvas Studio does allow you to create your own videos and caption them. And I can tell you, I took Deanna's um, webinar. It was really great. I learned how to do it. Um, it's not difficult. And I have um, three documents that Deanna shared with you all today. She gave um, a list of resources. She gave her video webinar, which I'm going to share with all of you so that you can um, watch the video and learn at your own pace uh, because her webinar did was an hour and a half long. It was as long as this webinar. And so um, you can learn how to caption videos. And of course the distance learning team is here to help you. And so we're available to all of you so that if you want to caption your own videos, we can help you with that. Um, but what I will say is captioning videos is important. If you do take a video from YouTube and it has words and you feel like it's, um, correctly captioned, please make sure that it, it is when you're looking for videos because just because YouTube automatically captions it doesn't mean it's correctly captioned. Um, you would know if it's correctly captioned if the video doesn't start automatically. Um, if the video has periods, commas, has uppercase lettering, um, does, does not have words misspelled, that would be correct captioning. And so, um, you can embed videos. I'm going to press edit um, from YouTube. I searched for a, a video today in preparation for you on how to um, how to embed videos. And so 
uh, let's see, here's the video, how to embed videos on Canvas. I searched for this video, how to embed a video on Canvas, and noticed that I put CC on there. So CC is closed captioning. And by putting CC, mm -hmm. when I was searching, it's just a little tip, um, it actually helps me to get videos that are captioned. And so when I'm looking for a video, I noticed that most TED Talks are captioned, but um, it'll give me captioned videos. And so you know that it's captioned too here if it says CC, but you want to look at the video to make sure that it's captioned. So here, if I start playing the video, you're gonna see that there are um, uppercase lettering, there's um, uh, exclamation mark. And so it looks like this has been captioned already. Can we edit those captions? Um, if the video owner already captioned it or not? Okay, so um, this video is actually captioned and um, I can embed this video by, by just going to the share button here. So if you see this share button, you can go ahead and share. I wanna embed the video so I can choose the embed link. There's my embed link. I can copy that link. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to my page. And um, that's an HTML code. So I just find where I wanna place it and your HTML is here, these, these symbols here at the bottom, these two, um, you click on that, that's HTML. And wherever you want the video, you can actually just put in the video. I'm gonna put in the code. There, I just pasted it. And I can save. Actually, I just went back to regular view. I clicked it again, and then the video should appear. And so um, the video is here now. I embedded the video. So again, all I did was copy the code. I went to the video where it says share. I clicked how I wanted to share it. I wanted to embed it. I copied the code. And then once it was copied, I just went in, placed it where I wanted it, but actually I need to use HTML. So down here in the rich content editor, editor at the bottom, it says click here for the HTML editor. So I click on the editor and I can just place it wherever I want it. I want it here and I can just paste. I pasted the embed code there. I click on the HTML icon again. And now you'll see there's the video. See, now I have three versions because I've done it three times now. So in any case, this is, this is how I can embed um, a video. Now you can also um, search for videos, right? By using your icons. Here you have Canvas Studio, you have Films on Demand, you have TED-Ed, you have Vimeo. So you can search for uh, videos here. Uh, but just make sure if you are using a tool, here you have YouTube, you can search for YouTube there. If you're using um, a video, please make sure that it's captioned because captioning allows accessibility to your video for everyone. So you can actually do a search here. Look, I was doing a search on Mexican revolution in YouTube. I can find different videos here. And so I would have to actually watch the videos and find which one is actually um, captioned correctly. And if it's not captioned correctly, I would actually have to go through um, Canvas Studio and I could um, create captions for the video. And so I noticed that there are some questions and we are running out of time. So I'm gonna refer back to the handout that I gave you. And I'm actually going to give you that handout um, again right now um, so that you have it. So everything that I did today is going to be available to you um, in that handout. But I did provide a couple of extensions. Um, uh, URL uh, is using the WAVE tool. WAVE tool is something that can help you with accessibility and also the link to Pope Tech. So here, these are not accessible 
links, but on your Word document, they are accessible. And so um, I shared those two things with you. But again, please know that the distance learning team is here to help you. And, um, and you can always reach out to us. I noticed that Bernice has a question. Bernice? Yeah, you did. You mentioned uh, Deanna had given you a couple of like for her webinar on, yes. uh, and, and have you put that into the chat yet or? I have not. So, um, so Deanna shared it with us. And so we're asking Leslie to mail it to all the participants. So all okay. of you will be getting it. Okay. And I will make sure that she also, um, I'm going to put it in the chat right now so that you can, oh, now I can see you. So um, that you can have the document again that I shared with all of you. Let me share that with you right now. Uh, what we began with today. So I gave you an accessible version of what we did today, accessibility in Canvas. There it is again. Oh, it's not going through. Okay, that, that um, I'll make sure. Document. That was the Word not, document, correct? Right, I'll make sure that Leslie has it so that um, she can send it to all of you. And um, I will make sure that you have the uh, Canvas Studio from Diana. She really did a beautiful presentation. It was wonderful and I really learned a lot from her. And so um, I'm so gracious to her for sharing it with you. And so we'll make sure you all receive that. So um, are there any other questions that I can answer today? I'm um, at the end of our presentation. And so if you do have questions, please feel free to ask. Um, and if you don't, please feel free to contact um, the distance learning team. Uh, we're instructors like you. Uh, we believe in accessibility. We believe in creating great design courses for our students. And we're just very happy to be here working with you all. So um, I appreciate you joining us today. And I look forward to continuing to work with all of you.